The AAV vector has been developed for gene delivery both in vitro and in vivo. This video will cover how to identify an AAV plasmid and understand some of its important elements. In order to produce the AAV vector, three plasmids are required. The packaging plasmid, the transfer plasmid, and the helper plasmid. This video covers the transfer plasmid, which encodes the AAV vector genome. The AAV plasmid I'll review in this video is a basic AAV control plasmid encoding GFP. First question, how do I even know this is an AAV plasmid? By the ITRs or inverted terminal repeats. AAV plasmids can be identified from other non-AAV plasmids because they have two ITRs. The ITRs and the region between are what gets packaged in an AAV molecule. Everything outside of this region is your plasmid backbone and does not make it into the AAV vector. This region within the ITRs will contain several elements. The most important is usually your transgene. This is the gene you're studying and want to get expressed, such as the fluorescent protein GFP. In order for your gene of interest to be expressed in an organism, it'll also need to be downstream to a promoter sequence. On plasmid maps, promoters can be found upstream of the gene it controls. Promoters are specific to organisms and sometimes even tissue types. Using a fish synapsin promoter, for example, will result in expression specific to neurons in the fish. Using the same promoter in a mouse, however, will result in no expression. Promoters can also drive different levels of expression. Strong promoters like CAG will drive very high and non-specific expression levels. All AAV transfer plasmids will have ITRs, and most of them have promoters. Now I'm going to talk about some of the elements that aren't required for AAV transfer plasmids, but that you'll often see in them. I'll also describe what these elements do and how they might affect the activity of the AAV vector. In order to control gene activation, transfer plasmids will sometimes have lock sites. These are directional 34 base pair sequences that can be found flanking the transgene. The transgene is usually inverted to prevent expression. Lock sites are recognized by the recombinase CRE. Transfer plasmids will usually have two pairs of lock sites. This dual lock system is called FLEX or DIO. CRE will first flip the sequence between the first pair and then excise the sequence between the second pair. The result is a permanently flipped gene. This allows researchers to control the spatial and temporal activation of genes by controlling the availability of Cree. While lock sites are useful for turning genes on and off, other elements can contribute to how well the gene is expressed. These are typically used to enhance the expression of a gene and are called cis-regulatory elements. I'll describe the WPRE and the poly-A sequence, which are two examples of cis-regulatory sequences commonly found in AAV transfer plasmids. Both of these elements usually appear at the end of the AAV genome, just upstream of the final ITR. The WPRE element helps the transcribed RNA form a tertiary structure and aims in nuclear export. The poly-A sequence creates a tail of adenosine nucleotides on the mRNA. This also aids in nuclear export. Once in the cytoplasm, the poly-A tail stabilizes RNA by protecting it from degradation. The poly-A tail also aids in RNA translation. Both the poly-A and the WPRE sequences help increase the expression of your transgene. This video has shown you how to identify some of the key elements in an AAV transfer plasmid. Remember that there are many possible element combinations which will depend on the purpose of your AAV. When packaged into an AAV and delivered into a host, each element will contribute to the successful and specific expression of your gene of interest.